back with another video, another recap of my Norm tournament here in Spain. It is currently 10 p.m. local time. I'm exhausted. Today was another rough day. The double rounds are really rough and this is only day two. <laughs> so yeah, it's been uh, quite hectic over here, but let's get right into the game. Let's talk about what happened. So in round three, I faced uh, Serafin Moral Garcia uh, from um, Spain. Uh, rated 22 23 uh, Fide Master. So, um, going to this game, I was really excited to play with the white pieces because it's the first time in the tournament that I'm playing with the white pieces. And I thought, yeah, finally, I, <laughs> I'm sick of the black pieces now because I lost twice. So, anyway, um, yeah, I lost internet again, but let's see uh, if we can uh, go through the games without internet. <laughs> anyway, so I started with E4. And I was expecting either e5 or c5, but my opponent hit me with c6. And since I have played already three times the fantasy variation uh, recently, I thought it's a terrible idea to play this now. And I kind of want to keep my 100% score. Oh, the third game you don't know about yet, probably. I still have to upload that recap uh, at some point. But yeah, I basically am three out of three in fantasy variation, so I kind of want to maintain that score. But I thought that my opponent would have prepared really well against the fantasy variation because it's like super fresh, right, that I've played this. But um, yeah, I played knight c3 and my opponent played d5. My opponent would seem to have prepared pretty well because I have knight of three, d takes e4, knight takes e4. Uh, my opponent went for knight of six and he was making the moves really quickly, um, which was a little bit intimidating because I was kind of out of... Um, yeah, my comfort zone, I'd say. I want to get some other position than I'm used to in a Karakan because a Karakan is just... It, I feel like it's such a boring opening. So when someone plays it against me, I'm always struggling, like, what do I do? Um, that's why I've been experimenting a lot with different lines. So um, you are warned if you play it against me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I went for this line and... Um, yeah, I took on f6, e takes f6, d4, bishop d6, bishop d3. And basically, um, the problem in this position, let me just make a few more moves. Short castle, short castle. And here, black can play bishop g4. And the problem here is, is that this pin is really annoying. Usually, this knight goes to e2 in Karakan lines. Um, but here, it is on uh, f3, which means that it can be pinned, and this pin is super annoying. So I play, uh, I play h3, bishop h5, rook e1, but I'm struggling to get out of this pin, and yeah, it's hard to find a plan. My opponent plays 97, g4. I play g4 because I just didn't know what else to do, because if I don't play g4, what other move do I have? At some point, my opponent plays c5, rook comes to e8, and slowly but surely, my opponent will start having a better position. Just very comfortable for black to play here. So I played g4, bishop g6, and here I took. And I guess taking is not the best idea, simply because, um, yeah, this pawn cube over here is so strong, it's really difficult to um, attack over here. Okay, I cannot select all four of them. <laughs> but um, yeah, I knew what I was going for. But yeah, for some reason, I just didn't want to waste time with knight h4. But I guess knight h4 would have been a little bit more accurate. So I took pawn takes queen d3. And um, my opponent goes rook e8. I take, take, bishop d2. Not much is really going on just yet. We're just simply developing. And it's really difficult to find a good plan here with white because you basically have like so much space, but it's hard to make use of the space because the pawn structure of black is so solid. So my opponent goes knight f8, so the knight is heading towards f4. So because I play g4, now f4 is super weak. So I have to be careful. I play rook e1, queen d7. I play c4 because I want to try pushing d5 maybe at some point. My opponent plays rook d8, sort of stopping me from playing d5 because then I would be losing a pawn, let's say takes, takes, and... Um, I'm going to lose that pawn next move. Let's say the bishop goes anywhere. I don't know, b8. The pawn cannot be defended. So that is already a problem. So I can't play d5. So I simply go queen e4 because I want to move forward and maybe prepare d5 or something like this. And when I play this move, I realize, oh, my opponent is f5. Um, a little bit annoying, I guess. It's not the end of the world, but yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I can't just move the queen back or something. I have to take. It's the only move. 
So queen takes f5, my opponent played, queen takes, pawn takes, and here I was actually quite optimistic about my chances because I thought I can create some weaknesses. Knight h4, so my opponent has to play g6 pretty much uh, to defend the pawn, and now I come in with bishop g5, and I really like my position because the dark squares are weak um, over here. I can't, for the life of me, make the right... Um, the right uh, selections. <laughs> anyway, um, I was really excited about this position, but after rook d7, I spent a lot of time here. So the time situation is my opponent has 56 minutes, I have 52 minutes, but it feels like I'm doing great in this position. But when I look at the options here, I suddenly don't like anything that's going on here because Basically, I want to play rook e8, right? That's a very logical move. But after rook e8, my opponent can easily get out of the pin by playing king g7, next is f6, or, well, you have to be a little bit careful with that, but basically knight e6 comes in, attacks my bishop and the pawn on d4, and I basically have to retreat, and my rook is not doing anything over here. So that's why um, I didn't like rook e8, so what about bishop f6? Because I want to stop the king from moving to g7, right? So then my opponent can play knight h7, and then I struggle to find a good move for my bishop here. Um, I can play rook e8 check, bishop f8, but yeah, I basically have to retreat to e5 and then f6, and I basically lose my pawn on d4. So I was struggling a lot in this position to find the best move. Um, I was thinking for a lot of long time, and at some point I thought to myself, okay, list the candidate moves that you are considering. So I listed them one by one, and I went through them one by one. And then basically um, went by process of elimination. This move is bad, this move is bad, this move... Is... Basically all moves were bad, but I was trying to find the least bad move. <laughs> and I went for c5. And it's very obvious that this move is not great, right? I mean, I'm permanently weakening the square d5. My pawn on d4 is the one of the most sad pawns ever abandoned by the pawn on c5 but i simply couldn't figure out what else to do because i thought okay the bishop now has to go back so that is at least somewhat in my favor i can come in with the rook but after king g7 i'm retreating to f3 to defend the pawn uh, just to quickly illustrate the pawn on d4 was not hanging here because i can play bishop e7 and the knight is simply hanging so that's why my opponent had to get out of the pin, because bishop e7 was a threat. And now I just go back to defend the pawn, knight e6, and I'm already sensing that I'm in some sort of trouble. So bishop d2, I went back with the idea that my opponent cannot take, because takes, takes, and bishop c3. So that would lose the rook, right? So, yeah, I thought bishop d2, okay, I'm still holding on, but I can already sense the danger, right? Rook d8, and I was really displeased with this move because it, I thought if there's one thing I have in the position going for myself is that rook on e8. And guess what? I have to trade it. There was one funny line that I saw that after rook e7, if you tried to avoid the trade, if you play king f6, there is rook takes c7, knight takes, and bishop g5, and you capture the rook on d8, and you'll be up a piece. So I was really like excited to see this line, but of course after rook e7, black can just play king f8, and the rook is trapped. <laughs> incredible <laughs> so um yeah that's uh, a little bit unfortunate so i had to take i had to take bishop takes and yeah i'm fully aware that this position is just losing i mean my pawns are so bad especially the pawn on d4 bishop f6 isn't coming and sooner or later i will lose some pawns so i went king f1 to try to avoid any sort of knight f4 move because i was thinking let's say i play b4 Bishop here, bishop here, knight f4, then h3 is hanging, um, knight is also threatening to play uh, knight e2, so yeah, not a great position. So I went king f1, bishop f6, bishop c3, g5, and my opponent just tries to get some um, play on the king side. I play b4 because I thought, okay, I have nothing else to do. My opponent goes knight f4, and here I play a4, and I thought, okay, like, if you want to take that pawn h3, be my guest, I, I can't possibly accept myself playing knight g1. I, I, I can't do that. I mean, if, if you play knight g1, you can you might as well resign, right? So my opponent took on h3. And the funny thing is, is that that is a bad move. 
My pawn had to uh, play moves such as knight d5 or simply a6 to try to stop any sort of counterplay on the queen side. But with knight d5, you're controlling the center so well, you can slowly start pushing, right? You can play like g4, king g6, like you can slowly make progress because white cannot do anything there. But because my opponent took on h3, I suddenly start to get chances. I play b5, knight f4, and here I, um, well, I had 12 minutes on the clock, but um, yeah, remember that one moment I spent a lot of time, I spent like 30 minutes on that move. But now in this position, uh, I had 12 minutes and I spent quite some time because I thought, okay, like this is a very important position because if I have any sort of counterplay, it needs to happen now. If I don't have any counterplay, it means I'm lost. So I felt like this was a critical position. I need to figure out something on the queen side. And then I found out that b6 is a really cool move. It looks like I'm just allowing my opponent to shut down the queen side and everything is fine for black. But what I realized is that this square a5 is waiting to be occupied by my knight. If my knight gets to that square, the pawn b7 is my target and I can capture that pawn. And I thought, wait a second, maybe we're cooking something here. And by the way, if my opponent takes that pawn, there will be some issues along uh, this side that, um, yeah, my opponent can just not... Well, it, my opponent can stop the pawns, but it's not so clear. It's very complicated and um, black needs to play very precise. So, yeah, I was really excited about this. I played b6 and I thought, okay, my opponent has to figure out what to do now. My opponent spent uh, approximately 15 minutes on this move, went for a6. And I thought, okay, the plan is uh, going to be played. 92, 96, 94, 98, because my opponent wants to defend that pawn somehow, right? Apparently it was completely fine to take that, but during the game I thought it was just completely winning for uh, white, but apparently knight takes c5 is the way to go. But yeah, this is completely insane. Um, anyway, knight d8 was played, and here I play knight a5. One small detail here is that knight d6 was much better because my opponent has to play king g6 or move the pawn and this is very crucial and you will see in a few moves why it is important that the king is not getting close keep it in mind so i played knight a5 um which is not a bad move but it basically loses that one small tempo or like difference that could have been you know like very important for the game so my opponent still played king g6 so it didn't matter at all but in this position, the only move that still draws for uh, black is king f8. And the idea is simple. Well, it's not so simple, but black simply is in time to bring the king over to d7 and stop any sort of craziness going on over here. It's really difficult to understand this because you're leaving the bishop alone and you kind of want to protect it. And there's all sorts of moves here, like d5, knight takes b7, all sorts of ideas that you need to uh, keep an eye on. So. It's pretty crazy that that's the only drawing move there. But instead, my opponent went for king g6. And here I strike with d5 and I was so excited. But the only issue I have is I have three minutes on the clock. So my opponent took. And here I did not find the only move to win here. If you want to figure out the move by yourself, feel free to pause the video now and try to find the winning move for white. So um, yeah, in the game, I played bishop takes f6. And I was really confident that I made the right choice and that I should be winning here. But what I didn't realize is that the move knight takes b7 is simply crushing it. I did consider this 100%, but for whatever reason, I thought I can't be doing this because the knight goes to c6 and I was afraid some sort of fortress may occur. But what I didn't realize is that after knight c6, I can retreat to a5. And of course, this bishop endgame is completely winning for me because I have two pass pawns just right there going to queen. And yeah, for some reason, these ideas did not really cross my mind. I mean, I was very low on the clock already here, so it was already quite a risk to go for this line. I was a little bit, little bit nervous, but I had nothing to lose anymore. But um, yeah, this was a crucial mistake. In this position, I had to play knight takes b7, and this would have been winning because knight takes b7, you simply push the pawn, and um, 
the pawns are unstoppable. For some reason, I thought that the pawns could be stopped. I think I, I thought bishop takes c3. Yeah, I basically, I calculated these lines, but then you just stop calculating after something like this. You're like, oh, the pawns are stopped. But I, I just forget to look for b7 or something. So like, I saw all the moves, all the lines. Well, not all the moves. I saw the lines, but I didn't manage to calculate them fully. And I really think if I had like, 20 minutes, I think I could figure it out. So I'm a little bit upset at myself for spending so much time in the middle game when it was a bit unnecessary. But um, yeah, I was really struggling throughout the game. So what to do? But yeah, this was basically the one opportunity I had to strike and win the game. And at, in, in hindsight, I mean, like, it's of course sad to miss such an opportunity, but I thought, okay, what to do? We go next. Bishop takes, king takes, c6, and this was my whole idea. I'm simply um, capturing that knight because my opponent has to take my pawn now, and I thought this must be okay for me. But I kind of underestimated how my opponent has a lot of counterplay. King e5, knight c5, king b6, knight takes, c5, a5, king c6, knight b8. I'm basically trying to survive here because it's clear that I don't have enough pawns. My opponent has five pawns, and you would say that it's possible to capture them, but it's actually not so simple. King b7, knight d7, c4, knight b6. Uh, mind you, I'm here playing on the uh, increment, so it's really tough time over here. King c6, king e2, d4, oh, f4, sorry. Now my opponent played d4. I'm just going to quickly uh, guide you through this uh, because it's very tough. I mean, for me, it's tough to try to find a way to capture pawns. My opponent's task is just to push pawns. <laughs> a6, c3. Um, so basically, by playing a6, I am, um, yeah, not allowing my opponent to capture my pawns so easily. So there's no access to the pawn just yet. I do play knight d6, which is kind of a funny move. Um, because yeah, after king takes d6, I can just promote the pawn, of course. So my opponent goes for um, king b6 and captures my pawn. I take the pawn on f7. Then I come back to e5, I take, take, a7, and once I played a7, I was like, oh, I'm so relieved because after my opponent has to take, then I played knight c6, and my opponent actually offered a draw in this position, and I, I, of course, I instantly agree, because I'm capturing that pawn on d4, let's say king c5, knight c2, and my next moves are king f3, capturing the pawn, and after that, it's just a very well-known uh, theoretical draw. My knight is just hopping around that pawn, um, actually, I can just play like knight a3 or knight e3, depending where the king goes. And there's no way that my opponent can stop me um, or like try to, um, yeah, capture my knight or something. So, yeah, that was this game. Pretty insane. Um, I was really happy that I um, managed to save it because I was very aware of the fact that I was in a completely lost position. I did have one chance, but at the end of the day, um, I'm just happy that I didn't lose this game because I would have been quite bad. But um, yeah, it was a really tough game. It was really interesting and uh, well played by my opponent. But um, yeah, I had to be a bit more precise than I could have won the game maybe. But um, yeah, fun game. Fun game after all. Um, anyway, let's go to round four because round four was something else, guys. Round four was something else. Let's take a look. So my opponent is Camille Desero. Uh, she is from Switzerland and she's a woman international master. Um, and yeah, I known her for like quite some time. I've seen her around in playing for um, her national team, representing the national team of Switzerland. So yeah, I believe we never played before, but I've seen her around. So it was really nice uh, to play her. Um, and she went for e4. I was really happy, of course, because I get to play the French again. She went for d4, d5, and she played the knight e2 variation, which is the Tarash. And here I decided to go for bishop e7. So usually I, I have like a lot of different lines here. Um, I switch around quite a bit. There's so much you can play in this position. I went for bishop e7. And I believe she did not expect this because she started to spend quite some time here. She played c3. I went for knight f6 and... <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I have no idea. But when I played knight f6, I played this pretty quickly. I played knight f6 and I'm like, wait, is this just a bad move? <laughs> because e5, knight fd7, and okay, I thought maybe like f4 or queen g4, uh, not there, here. <laughs> but my opponent went for bishop d3, so also really good, c5. 
And here, uh, my opponent spent uh, some time, okay, eight minutes is not that much, but my opponent went for an idea of three, um, which is not a great move. Um, but yeah, basically the problem is, is that usually in this variation, this knight is on f3, which makes it much better for black in the sense that this pawn is not on f4, it's harder for white to attack, and it's just a completely different position. But now with the knight on g1, my position is just really awkward. Queen can come to g4, and just things are not really working out or something. It's really strange. But I was so sure this was fine. But okay, when I played knight f6, I did realize something's wrong here. I don't like this. My opponent went for knight e f3. She wants to put the knight on e2, short castle maybe, and knight f4, knight h5. Moves like that are very, um, very, uh, very good, I think. I went for b6. I really struggled to find a plan, honestly, because I thought, okay, um, I just go for like the standard plan to try to trade off the bishop on a6. But I wasn't entirely sure what I do after that because my opponent is simply attacking on the king side. So she goes knight g5. I did think that knight g5 was maybe a bit premature. I there is not not a direct threat, I would say, because knight g5 takes takes. Um, you can't really take that pawn on h7 uh, as of now because yeah, there's a lot of issues in white's position. White needs to develop the pieces. I took on d4. I took. Uh, I took because yeah. I simply want to release the tension and start playing knight c6 to get to b4 maybe, and also uh, attack the pawn on d4. Maybe I can um, do something with that because right now if White takes on h7, I can take on d4. Uh, actually, I can also play knight b4. But the idea was simple that I just wanted to play knight takes d4 if needed, so that after queen takes d4, I can recapture the knight, and this this looks good for Black. But of course, um, yeah, knight takes h7 is not a great move at all here. I went for knight c6, and of course, uh, a3 is played to prevent knight b4, so a really sensible move. I went for b5, uh, another classic move over here, because I have the queen takes, there's knight takes d4, and um, yeah, I have a really nice position. I'm just going to attack my opponent. This pawn may also fall at some point, so yeah, white is really like behind the development here. So my opponent went for knight e2 to defend the pawn on d4. I went b4 because what else do I have? I'm not sure. Bishop d2, queen b6, and here I spent quite some time. So uh, the current um, situation on the clock is that my opponent has 27 minutes. She spent quite a lot of time uh, figuring out how to, um, you know, set up the attack on the king side. Um, so I was pretty much playing on the clock, not as much, but yeah, I, I tried to go for practical moves, um, but here I did spend quite some time because I knew that this is a very critical position um, because now the question is, okay, knight takes h7 is a threat now. I need to figure out how to deal with it. Well, actually not as of now uh, because let me show you like a funny line. So let's say I play, I don't know, a a5, knight takes here. The problem with the move is that there's, I believe, g6. That's what I wanted to play at least. And the funny thing is, okay, knight f6 is just losing the pawn and not so bad uh, for white, but if knight g5, I can take that, take, queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, and I'm picking up the other rook, and then all of a sudden it will be two rooks, a knight, against, and, and another knight against queen and knight. So that's a lot of material for black. So I was really uh, excited about that, but of course it's not going to happen, but I thought at least this is why knight takes h7 is not, you know, uh, to be considered. But then the question is, what else do I have? Because if I play h6 carelessly, there's always moves such as knight takes e6, and it's really annoying here. In this current position, my knight is simply hanging, the pawn on d5 is hanging, and my king is completely exposed here. Knight is jumping to f4 soon, to g6. It just looks I was very awkward overall. So anyway, queen b6, the idea that I had in mind was that if my opponent takes, which she did, so I basically baited her into playing this, then I can take on d4. And it's really funny that the engine thinks this is a miss because I thought it was a brilliant move. I thought I was being a genius. Um, but yeah, the engine, like this is the second best move and it's not a very big difference with the top move. But the engine basically wants to take first and then take on d4. So that hurt a little bit, computer. Um, I thought I was being a genius, but I guess not really. So uh, knight takes e4, knight takes e4 was played. And here I take on e5, queen b5 check. Takes, takes, rook b8. I calculated all of these uh, moves. Knight c7 check. 
that came as a bit of a surprise, I guess. I don't know. I, I expected other moves. Um, but yeah, honestly, Knight 7 is a very good move. So <laughs> I'm not sure why I did not really consider this as much. Uh, but I guess I was just feeling very optimistic. And I was also not spending so much time uh, because my opponent was really running low on the clock. My opponent in this position has 9 minutes on the clock. I have 53. So you can like imagine, you know, what the dynamic is. And here my opponent went for knight d5. It's really difficult to see what the best move is in this position. Really difficult to play here. But I guess that she had the opportunity to play knight a6 and um, start picking up the pawn on b4, which is a really annoying pawn. But I guess she thought that, you know, this pawn on d5 is super strong and it's good to get rid of that. So she took, I took back and now knight g5. And I took on a3, of course, because I don't want to open up the a file for my opponent. And here in this position, okay, I have a lot of time, and I know I'm winning, I'm much better, but it's very difficult actually, because this pawn on d5 is not really going anywhere. It is quite a big of a weakness, and there's not a lot of pieces and pawns left in the on the board. So one tiny mistake, and I'm done for. So I thought, okay, I have to get a little bit more practical here. And I played with rook b2. The idea is simple, I put a rook on the second rank because rooks on the second rank are so important. So if you get the opportunity, you should always heavily consider this. And I thought this can really come in handy long term. So let's just control the second rank and we'll see what happens. Also it helps that the king is in the center, not castled yet, and can't castle right now because one cute idea is long castle is possible, it's a, a legal move, but there's checkmate. <laughs> So that's actually really crazy. But my opponent played a really good move here. She played rook h3. So she's pretty well on the clock, but she is seeing the right moves. I played d4 with the idea that I want to stop any sort of bishop c3. I thought I have to shut down that bishop at all costs because I feel very uncomfortable. But turns out that um, there were other moves that I could have played. Um, yeah, moves such as knight g4. I mean, knight g4 is really difficult to play because... It feels really slow. The threat is knight takes f2, of course, but I never knew what to do about most such as rook d3. I was not so sure about this. Um, I know there's a pawn on h4 hanging, but yeah, for some reason I felt really uncomfortable uh, experimenting with this. And yeah, there's rook takes d5 that can be played at some point. I mean, there's long castle now, right? But I guess there's bishop takes a3 right now. Oh no, wait, that's not a move, sorry. There's knight takes f2 actually, but that's actually completely insane. Yeah, there's some really insane lines over here. But yeah, it was basically really difficult to figure out what to do. I went for d4, my opponent went f4, and here I pretty much instantly took on g5. I was really excited because I, I calculated f4, but um, yeah, if the bishop takes g5, I thought, okay, if my opponent takes with the h-pawn, there's rook takes, pawn takes, knight of three check, and I'm winning the bishop. So of course it's not going to be played, but if f takes g5, which is actually what happened in the game, I thought, okay, I have knight versus bishop, and I really like my chances. But this is the start of basically me with 38 minutes on the clock and my opponent has two minutes. I'm the one missing every move and resource that is out there of my opponent. I don't know what happened to me, but I was feeling super confident. I thought, okay, I have it in the bag very soon. It should be fine. Um, but every single move that kind of passed, I started to get really worried. Um, Apparently, here it was important to play knight c4. Well, I did consider this heavily, of course, but I didn't like long castle as much, and apparently I'm supposed to play rook c8 here, there's bishop c3, and there's just some madness going on here. So I really disliked the long, long castle move, and then after that, I just, I basically don't really understand the point of the position altogether, but apparently this is completely fine for black, and black is just winning. The pawn on a3 is falling, um, I have control of the second rank, and white has no counterplay. But it was really difficult to see this um, whatsoever, and I thought I'd just have a simple win somewhere. So bishop takes, pawn takes, knight c4, and my opponent went for long castle on the 26th move. It's still possible, it's crazy. But um, yeah, I did see this coming, but... A lot of the times I started missing simple moves. I started missing that rook d3 is a move at some point. So I see long castle, but then um, I'm, you know, I'm analyzing, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, okay, so if long castle, I can play rook b8, 
But then I start to realize that there is moves such as bishop b4, there's bishop c3, and my position is just falling apart. If I'm not careful, I might actually lose this. So I play king e6 with the idea, okay, if my opponent plays bishop b4, which I have in my mind, um, then I'm just going to play moves such as king e5 uh, or king d5. Well, uh, unfortunately for me, if I play king e5, there's rook takes d4. Or not. Oh. I thought that was rook takes d4. Okay, I guess only after king d5 there's rook takes d4 because king takes bishop c3 and my opponent picks up the rook, so it's uh, going to be up a pawn. But I guess after king e5, uh, there's no rook takes d4 because of rook takes b4. Yeah, I, I did not quite catch that. But okay, anyway, king e5, and uh, I thought there was going to be bishop c5 attacking the pawn d4, and I still have to figure out how to defend this pawn, which is not going to happen because rook d8, rook d3. Yeah, what to do? <laughs> I'm losing the pawn regardless. So I was really upset about this. I, I really underestimated my opponent's counterplay. I was so certain I was winning this super easily, but it was not so clear. Rook takes g2, rook takes d4, knight e5. I have to go back. If I play rook c8, there's rook c3, and any sort of trade is not good for me. I don't want to trade pieces. I need to make use of my pieces to somehow attack. So knight e5, rook c3. My opponent is playing aggressively here, and rightfully so, because my pawns are very vulnerable in 7th rank. Bishop d6, knight g4, uh, rook f4 check, king e6, my opponent has to play bishop move. Um, I take the pawn h4. Okay, I'm losing the pawn on f7, unfortunately, but yeah, you can't have it all. I play rook h2, uh, with the reasoning that maybe somewhere I can give some checks and find a way to, you know, have some nice pattern. Maybe I get to play rook g1 or rook h1. These moves are crossing my mind, and I'm just hoping to achieve something with this. Rook d7 check, king e5, rook f1. Um, mind you, for the past, I don't know how many moves, just quickly catching, uh, looking back. So from move 24 onwards, okay, this is, my opponent has two minutes here. And basically from that moment onwards, my opponent was, you know, very long o'clock. So this is like where did you uh, leave? This was basically we're on move 36. For like so many moves, my opponent is on 30 seconds increment, and she is playing phenomenal chess. She is defending so well. Rook f1, and she's just holding down everything. And um, it starts to get really difficult for me. I give a check, king b1, check, king a1, check, check, and here. Uh, I was really hoping that a certain tactic would work, namely rook takes b4, but unfortunately for me, there's rook one check, and okay, my rook is hanging, so I have to cover with the rook, right? But then the problem is there's rook e7, and I lose the rook. <laughs> and I thought, no, you, you can't, you can't do, like, you, you can't be uh, serious right now. But yeah. That is basically why rook takes b4 is not a move, because idea is simple. You want to, you know, take and then play rook a1, pick up the rook, and you're up a piece. But of course, it's not going to happen. Also, it's actually not easy to win that at all, because I will lose the g7 pawn, and I'm not so sure if this is actually winning. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, I play rook c2 check, because of course, bishop c3 is a threat. I have to cover that. And I play knight f2. I'm basically hoping that my knight can somehow join the attack. Let's say rook takes g7. I can give a check here, knight d3, and you know it's checkmate, however you want it. So that's why the rook needs to stay there to cover the square d3. Yeah, basically, during the game, I was thinking that, okay, like, I realized this one move, bishop c3. <laughs> this move, bishop c3, is just so strong because it looks like I can take it, right? But no, my rook is hanging. So if I can't take that bishop, it means that b2 is defended forever. This bishop is not going anywhere. And I was thinking to play maybe some move like king e4 or king e6 to attack the rook, but none of this is really working out or something. I mean, it's really difficult to see what I can do. I'm gonna, I can try knight e4, but as long as the bishop can stay on the diagonal, let's say king e6. Okay, if you take here, I guess maybe some knight e4 could be problematic. So you have to be really careful here. But anyway, uh, I was really upset to see that bishop c3 is a move. And my opponent is here on two minutes, but after two minutes uh, of thinking, she played rook c7, which is a huge mistake because of the line that I just mentioned. Rook b2 check, king c1, knight d3. And she basically allowed me to checkmate her, and she resigned here because it's checkmate in two moves. And I felt so lucky. I mean, I don't know. I, 
I, at some point I was like, okay, if she finds bishop c3, she like, she even deserves to win, I think, because she defended so well. She played really well, and I was really impressed by her play, but yeah, at the end, uh, it was the time advantage that uh, got me the win, I guess. I don't know. I was really lucky, really fortunate to win this game because it was really tough, and I, I felt so terrible of missing a lot of tactics, a lot of uh, opportunities, or well, it was not so simple, I guess, to win the game, but I did miss a lot of the moves that my opponent played. So um, yeah, all in all, a crazy day of chess. Um, I am finally on the scoreboard with one and a half points out of four, so it's really nice. Um, but yeah, tough games, I would say. And this um, kind of schedule with the double rounds is really grueling and it's too much, but we're going strong. I'm just going to take some rest now. Um, it's getting really late over here. And uh, yeah, I'll just quickly prep for tomorrow. And um, yeah, we're going to do our best again. Um, I really hope to continue doing these recaps every single day because right now it's it's so late and it's very tiring, you know, the whole day. So it really depends. I really thought that I was going to finish this game soon. I had like an hour on the clock. I thought, okay, like I'm going to finish this game really quickly, but then we still played until the very end because I finished with nine minutes. <laughs> so yeah, despite the time advantage, I still, uh, it still took super long to finish um, the game. And um, yeah, that's why it, it's very, very long hours I'm making as well. So yeah, we'll see if I continue with the recaps. I really enjoyed doing them, but uh, let's see how my energy levels can keep up with this. So. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. I hope to see you in the next video.